doors because they just keep popping back. And we're going to go now from, um, where were we? We were in Thebes, weren't we? We're going to Memphis, not for Elvis. We are going to Memphis in Egypt and Memphis to the temple of Tar, P-T-A-H, Tar, that origin of everything, that origin of life. And near that temple, where the river opens up, we will find a family. Well, yeah, a family, an unusual family. So we're talking about two brothers and one of them is married. And one of the brothers is a herdsman. Sorry, did I just say he was a herdsman? That's complete rubbish. He wasn't a herdsman, he was the herdsman. Because he had been blessed by Horus. Remember the falcon-headed god? Mm. He had been blessed by Horus, which meant that he would lead his oxen to the best pasture. If there was sickness anywhere, he would know and move his oxen away. If his oxen tripped, he would always treat them for any cuts and they would always get better. He was truly blessed and because he was blessed, his brother was blessed and his brother's wife was blessed and they lived happily together. There's no story in that. <laughs> because green eyes have to come in here somewhere. Because despite the fact that the herdsman Bata was a blessing on his family, his sister-in-law hated him. Because her husband Anubis would talk about nothing else. And how wonderful his brother was. And how much wealth his brother brought to them. And so... The wife decided to poison her husband. Not with food, not with drink, but with drip, 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 drip of words against her brother-in-law. She poisoned her husband's heart. She poisoned her husband's mind so that he thought he hated his brother. And one day Butter was driving home the oxen and he could see the homestead, and he could see the cattle stall, and he could saw, see the doorway to the cattle stall, and he, just as he was coming home, one of the oxen turned to him, and in the voice of the god Horus said, Beware your brother. He means to murder you. And Bata looked around and looked at the cattle stall, and under the door, between the door and the ground, he could see a pair of feet, his brother's feet. And so he turned and ran. Anubis heard him turning, realised his prey was running from him. He pushed open the door and ran after his brother, brandishing a dagger. Butter ran from his brother, pleading for his life. But Anubis was getting closer and closer. They were jumping over irrigation ditches and Horus. Horus, who had blessed Butter as a herdsman, saw this. And so he opened one of the irrigation ditches so that it was impossible to jump it. And he flooded it with water teeming with crocodiles so that Anubis could not get near Butter. And Butter sat where he was safe and held his head in his hands. What have I done to you? Why are you doing to this? And Anubis poured out all the poison that his wife had poured into his ear. And Bata said, no, brother, it's not true. And he went through all the times he'd shown his love for his brother and his sister-in-law. All that he'd done for them and nothing he had asked of them. And it didn't take long for Anubis to be sitting the other side of that irrigation ditch with his head in his hands, sobbing at what he'd done. And he begged his brother to come back. And Bata said, no, I cannot. My time with you is over. I will go to the valley of the Acacia and I will dwell there. And because my time here with you on the earth is ended, I will take my soul and I will place my soul in the tallest Acacia tree, in the flower, in the topmost branches of the tallest Acacia tree and I will live there on my own. And my brother, you will know that I all is well if you hear nothing. 
But if one day as you drink your beer, your beer seethes, you will know that I have been cut down. And butter was as good as his word and left his brother and went to the valley of the Acacia. And Anubis went home and killed his wife. <laughs> Sorry, I, yeah, sort of disposable, you know? I, there's no reconciliation here, there's no family arbitration. It's just, she's, she's gone, okay, let's tell that. <laughs> so Butter goes to the valley of the Acacia and he takes his soul and places it in the flower in the topmost branches of the tallest Acacia tree and he builds a home next to it and he lives there on his own. But he gets visitors. The gods, obviously. They pop in occasionally to make sure he's okay. A group of nine of them, the Inia. And they realize that he's lonely. Now, remember, Armon had a car. Who got it? Isis. And she had to promise to give it to whom? Osiris. And? Horus. Horus, her son. So Horus, who was one of the gods, used the car. And the gods gathered earth and spat on the earth and formed it into a beautiful woman, a wife. And through the power of that car, she was given life. And at that point, the seven Hathors gathered. What shall we give her? Oh, no. Oh, no, not yet. <laughs> it's so, I mean, it's such a drag being a Hathor, you know? You gotta think every time. Come on, what should we give her? Strength. Strength? Charm. Charm. Intelligence. Intelligence. Health. Health. Laughter. Laughter. A happy life. A happy life? Yeah. <laughs> a long life? <coughs> and then she would be killed by a. Yeah! <laughs> You're no fun. <laughs> we'll say a long life then, because she can have a long life. Yeah. And the seventh one is a good husband. <laughs> <laughs> a sharp death. Oh. But Butter loves his wife. And every day he goes hunting, leaving her behind. And of course, when she's on her own, she's thinking, well, there's a valley. There's the acacia tree, I know my husband's spirit, his soul is in the top of that tree. I wonder what else there is. And so she asks Butter what else there is, and he says, well, beyond the valley there is the Nile, which is dangerous. The Nile would surely try and snatch you because you are so beautiful. And day after day he went off hunting, leaving her. And the more he told her she couldn't go to see the Nile, and one day while he was out hunting, she slipped out of the valley down to the Nile and she saw this breathtaking stretch of water. And as she stood near it, the Nile picked up her scent and desired her. And the Nile rose up and tried to snatch her. And in fear, she ran from the Nile, but the Nile caught a little wisp of her hair and pulled it from her head. And as she ran back to her home, the Nile carried that hair down, down the river to Memphis, where one of Pharaoh's servants was washing clothes in the river and smelled something. Acacia! And then the servant saw the hair floating past and realized the smell was coming from the hair. So with a bowl, lifted the hair in some Nile water and took it to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh smelled the Arcasia. The woman from whom this hair must have been taken must be the most beautiful woman in Egypt. She could be my queen. Arcasia, she must come from only one place, which is? So spies were sent. Unfortunately for them, they arrived while four Barta had gone hunting. I say they didn't last long. This is a man who is not truly human anymore. 
who has been blessed by Horus, king of the gods, and he soon made short time of them. Not killing them, but they left, knowing that he was dangerous. Next time, it was soldiers that turned up, but they stayed well back because they brought with them an old woman. And they waited until they saw Barta leaving the valley. And then the old woman went up and found Barta's wife and said, Pharaoh has smelt you. <laughs> Pharaoh desires you. You could become princess of Egypt, the paramount wife. But your husband, how could we defeat someone who is not human? And Barta's wife said, Well, it's funny you should ask. Barta was walking back from the kill of the hunt. And as he entered the valley, he saw a man in the tallest of the acacia trees calling along the topmost branches. And as the man used his sword to cut the topmost flower from the tree, Barter dropped to the ground, dead. Barter's wife went willingly to Pharaoh <laughs> and became princess of Egypt. Meanwhile, Barter's, Barter's brother was at home having a meal, drinking a cup of beer. Richard, you're an expert on this, I feel. Beer. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, only for scientific Science, obviously, obviously, research, research. research. Um, so, I'm not a great expert on beer. I understand sometimes it's got a head on it and sometimes it hasn't, and temperature and all those kind of things. Is it normal to have a rolling seed as if it's boiling? No. Right. <laughs> because Anubis's beer was seething on a rolling boil. Which means? Butter is dead. Butter is dead. Oh. Butter, he was warned. You've got to keep up. There's a quiz later. I'm warning you, all right? There's a written test. And so Anubis dropped his food and ran to the valley of the Acacia. And in the valley of the Acacia, near the entrance of the valley, he found the body of his brother. And he carried it and sat down with the body under the tallest of the Acacia trees. And he took a cup and poured some water into his cup and drank with memories of his brother. And he picked up one of the seeds, one of the acacia seeds from the ground and dropped it in his water and watched it swell. And as it swelled, Butter's chest swelled and he started to breathe again. And then Life came to him and he sat up and Anubis was amazed and Barta said, no, 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 I cannot stay here. This is only temporary. I will appear to you as a bull, a bull so white, not a single black hair upon my body. You must take me to Pharaoh and give me as an offering and Pharaoh will reward you. So then there was this bull, this white bull, and Anubis took Barta the bull to Memphis and presented him to Pharaoh and he was rewarded and everyone was amazed at this beautiful white bull, not a single black hair upon its body. And they took it to the temple and people gave it offerings. And at this time, Pharaoh's new wife, his new princess of Egypt, felt stirring in her stomach and she knew that she was with child. And so Pharaoh and his wife went to the temple and gave offerings to the white bull. Pharaoh gave offerings to the white bull and bowed in gratitude. His wife went up and gave offerings and bowed in gratitude and as she bowed she heard the bull say, I am he you would murder. I am your husband Barta. Mm -hmm. She left the sanctuary and went outside to her husband the Pharaoh and she doubled over in agony and screamed and rolled on the ground and Pharaoh said, what is wrong my wife? And she said, oh, you must promise to do something for me. You must help me or I will lose this child. And he said, I will promise anything. I will do anything for you. And she said, give me the liver of the white bull. Pharaoh's heart was torn.
tail in half. This sacred bull, what could he do? And so the bull was slain. And the blood and the liver filled a bowl. And the body was carried through the temple with the blood and the liver. And as they passed through the gate of the temple, there were two great stone pylons. And as they passed them, a drop of blood fell on each side. That night, two trees grew fully grown where the drops of blood had fallen. Miraculous trees! And for the months of the princess of Egypt's pregnancy, Egypt was successful in every endeavour. And people realised that these trees had to be a blessing upon Egypt. And so, when it was almost time for the princess of Egypt to be confined, to prepare to give birth, she and her husband went to pray at the temple and they sat on thrones between those two fully grown trees. And as they sat there, one of the trees leant over and said to the princess, I am he you would murder. I am your husband, Barta. And she held onto her belly and she screamed, and her husband, the pharaoh, said, my darling, what is wrong? What is happening? And she said, you must promise to help me. If you don't promise, I will lose the child, the heir of Egypt. He said, of course, I will do anything you want. She said, chop down the trees and burn them. <sighs> pharaoh's heart was now torn in four because Egypt had been prosperous with these magnificent and <sighs> amazing magical trees. But he had them chopped down and they were burnt. Not only were they burnt, they were burnt in front of the queen who stood there watching. And as the last piece of wood was eaten by the flames, she said, goodbye, husband. And as she said the word husband, a spark flew up from the fire and a splinter went into her mouth. She gave birth to a son who was named Prince of Cush heir of Egypt, and he grew up to be a strapping boy. We won't do the seven hathels for him, it's fine. <laughs> he grew up to be a strapping boy. And when his father died, he became Pharaoh. And he sat on the throne of Egypt with the crowns of Upper and Lower Egypt upon his head. And the symbols of Upper and Lower Egypt upon his crown, the cobra and the carrion. And he sat there and his mother knelt before him and placed her hands in his hands to swear allegiance. And as she swore allegiance, he leant forward and said, I am he you would have murdered. I am your husband, Barter. <laughs> and the seven Hathors were right. She did have a long life, but she also had a sharp, death. And Barter, embodied as the Pharaoh, ruled justly and wisely for many years. And why wouldn't he? With his brother as his chief advisor. <coughs> and that's one of the most famous myths, legends of ancient Egypt. And we've looked at stories, listened to stories about